أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم And he subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that we have revealed this Quran to take you out of something to take you out of the darkness, to take you out of a state of misguidance, and to bring you into a state of guidance, into a state of light. And this light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about is a light of guidance. It is His light subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He allows each and every one of us to benefit and to have some portion of this light of guidance. And that we taste the sweetness of Iman. Ameen ya Rabbul Alameen. Bidhni Allahi Ta'ala, I don't want everything to be very stressful. So, if I ask some questions, the brothers can respond inshallah. Inshallah. So, first question. We're going to talk about a story from the Quran. In the chronological order, in the order that we have the Quran, meaning Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran, and so on. What is the first story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions? What is the first story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about? Story of Adam alayhi salam. After that comes this story that we're about to speak about tonight which is the story of Bani Israel and a cow. The story of Bani Israel and a cow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala references this story in the Quran. And before we get to the story, I want to put out a little bit of a disclaimer. Some of what we are about to deal with, some of, some of the story that we are about to mention, some of the details of this story is found in the narrations of the Bani Israel. Some of the scholars refer to it as Israeliyat, from the riwayat of the, the Bani Israel. And there is a ruling when it comes to these concepts. When it comes to the concepts of those things that have been transmitted by the Bani Israel or that are found in the books, the Torah, and in the narrations of the Bani Israel, the ruling is that if it contradicts anything that Islam has sent, then we disregard it. And if there is something from Islam that coincides with that which these, these riwayat have, then the Islamic ruling takes precedence. But when it comes to these rulings by themselves, we do not accept them in their entirety, nor do we reject them. Right? We do not accept them in their entirety, nor do we reject them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts out the story, and it actually comes at the end of the story. The beginning comes at the end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ نَفْسًا فَدَّارَأْتُمْ فِيهَا وَاللَّهُ مُخْرِجٌ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after telling us about the story, telling us about the details of the story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, remember when you killed a man, and then you tried to hide it. Remember when you killed a man, and you tried to hide it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware and can bring forth that which you have tried to hide. So that is actually the beginning of the story. The Bani Israel, some from amongst them, killed a man. And the backstory in this is one that will mention recorded by Ibn Abi Hatim, wherein he says that there was a man from amongst the Bani Israel who he didn't have any children of his own, but he was pretty wealthy. He had money. And According to this narration, he only had a nephew who would inherit from him. So there was others from among 
comes to the community, some narrations say other nephews, other relatives, other family members who were jealous of this money. So when money is involved in any situation, it can escalate very quickly. So they devised a plot and they said, this man is taking too long to die, let's just kill him. If he's taking too long to die, we'll do it ourselves. So they killed the man. They killed the man and they, in this narration, it is said that they devised a plot. They devised a scenario wherein they would cast blame on someone. So they put the body in a certain area to cast blame on someone, to make, it, to make that person the case of suspicion. That person would be the one most likely to be thought of as the killer. And then they started to disagree amongst themselves, they started to argue and they started to fight until they almost picked up swords and weapons to kill each other. And then one from amongst them said, that why is it that you're about to kill each other when you have the Messenger of Allah in your midst? Referring to the Prophet Musa السلام, So they went to the Prophet Musa السلام, and they <coughs> explained the scenario. Musa السلام, he came and he tried to be arbitrator between them. He said, if any of you know about this man, what has happened to him, who killed him, if you yourself has killed him, then come forward and we can resolve the issue, you know, very calmly. But nobody said anything. Obviously, I, if you kill the man, you're trying to get the money, I'm going to stay quiet, let everything go over, and then we get the money back. That's how white power crime works. So, everyone was silent. Even the people who did kill the man. They were amongst them. They were some of the people who had the biggest, biggest mouth. They said, no, we didn't kill him. Somebody killed my uncle. This, this thing, that thing. He made it. He wanted his money. So the killers were among them. So Musa Ali said, okay, nobody's going to tell me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a command to them to deal with this entire scenario. They asked for a command. They asked for Musa to come and to give them a solution to find out what happened. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent down a verse. And a verse that we are having in our Quran and a verse that we heard in the Salah. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you to sacrifice a cow. Now this command, so Musa comes and he tells them, Allah has, has commanded that you sacrifice a cow. So everybody's looking like, what, what is this? Literally what they say is that, and Allah makes mention of this in the Quran, are you making a fool out of us? Are you joking with us? So Musa alayhi salam. So they thought that Musa was just making fun, or Allah was making fun of them, and billah. They thought that Allah was making fun, or that Musa was making fun, and that, you know, sacrificing a cow, what is this? How will that help us to determine who killed my uncle? So this points out the first flaw in the, in the entire story, and a point for us to learn from. Had they killed, had they sacrificed a cow, at that point, had they complied with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Everything would have been done and the salah would have been much shorter because there were only going to be two ayahs to recite regarding this story. But they didn't. So they said that this is not enough for us. So the people of Bani Israel, they said to Musa alayhi salam, go and ask your Lord. Go and ask your Lord to clarify for us, to tell us specifically what it is that He wants, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Musa asked, 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, tell them to sacrifice a cow that is not too old, nor is the cow too young. Meaning that the cow should not be one that is barren, unable to produce a child. Yet, it should not be a cow that is also too young and unable to produce a child. It should be one that is at its pinnacle of strength and youth. That should be the cow that they sacrifice. So, again, they weren't satisfied. So they go and they say, Musa, this is not enough. There's too many like this. Clarify for us again. Ask your Lord, Qalu ulana. Ask your Lord that He clarify for us again. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives them a color. He says, sacrifice a cow, baqaratun safra. Sacrifice a cow that is of yellow color, yellow complexion. Now, I don't know if any of you brothers have seen a yellow cow. I've never seen a yellow cow in my life. And I've seen a lot of cows. I've never seen a yellow cow. Has anyone seen a yellow cow? Nobody. I've seen a red cow. No yellow cow. So imagine, I've never even heard of a yellow cow rather, except in this story. So imagine them having to go and secure a yellow cow to sacrifice. Ibn Abbas he makes a comment on this ayah and he says when it comes to the yellow cow, it wasn't just any, oh yes, that cow has a hint of yellow. No, but the description that Ibn Abbas he, he gives is a cow that is deeply yellow, that it almost is shiny when the sun hits it. It almost looks white and shiny when the sun hits it. That's what Ibn Abbas he says. So they said that this is not enough. They said that all of the cows are still, you know, so much alike. Us, we may be thinking, okay, we have a cow that's not too old, not too young, it's okay. We have a color, that's kind of hard to find, the color that, he's, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given to us. Now we have, now we're even asking for something more. Ben Israel is asking for something more than this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells them, go and sacrifice a cow, not too old, not too young, one of yellow color, and also this cow must not be one that has ever worked in the field. It was never trained to till the soil or to plow the soil. And it must be a sound animal, it must be a healthy animal without any type of blemishes, without any type of cuts, deformities, bruises. And it must be pleasing to that who beholds it. It must be pleasing to the individual or the people that behold that animal. So now we have a laundry list of characteristics that this cow must have. And then Bani Israel, they say, okay, now you've come to us with something. Now you have for us something that is set and secure. We have enough, we can go and we can find this cow. So many things, so many characteristics. They made it so hard for themselves. And then they're like, okay, now we have enough. Let's, let's take a pause on this. Let's talk about the cow. Part of this comes from the riwayat of the Bani Israel that we've spoken about. But one of, the, one of the accounts is that the cow belonged to a man who was righteous. He was a believing individual. He was a good man. And he had a wife and he had a son. The man was not a wealthy man. The man was not a wealthy man. Rather, he was quite poor, except for a cow that he had, that fit this description. It was a yellow cow. 
And so before he died, according to this narration, he said to his son, you know, this is a cow, we have it. This is our source of wealth. You will take care of it. And he gave specific instructions. It should not be a cow that we put to work in the field. It should not be a cow that we put to work in the field or a cow that we have to do manual labor. Rather, it's a cow that we're going to keep it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. It's going to be a source of wealth for us. And we're going to have it. So he complied with the request of his father. His mother also passed away. And in addition to what his father had mentioned to him, I omitted one piece of advice that his father gave to him. He said that if at any time you are to sell this cow, they had stipulated a price. Do not sell the cow for anything less than such a price. So that was agreed upon. The son, he kept his promise to his father and his mother. His father had passed away, his mother had passed away. Who knows, Allahu A'lam, some years had passed. And here come these nephews. Here comes these groups of people looking for a cow that's yellow, that has never worked in the field, that has done this and this and is not too old, not too young. And this is a cow that they come across. So they come and they want to buy this cow. They need this cow rather. So they, so they try to get the cow. The boy, he doesn't want to sell the cow as a price was previously discussed and agreed upon with him and his father. So eventually they ended up paying and the narrations, they differ. Some say that they paid the cow in they paid for the cow in the amount of gold that would fit into the skin of the cow or the amount of gold that would be in the weight of the cow and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best what they had paid bottom line is they ended up paying a substantial amount of money for the cow so they went and they killed this cow all of this just to kill the cow and then they were commanded to take a piece of the meat of this cow and strike the individual who had died. To strike the individual who had died and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused this individual to come back to life. And it was determined who had killed this man based on this. And as the matter was solved and as the matter was determined, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded that the man go back to being in a state of death once again. So this is in brief the story of Bani Israel and the cow. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not send for us stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not send for us stories for us to sit, to enjoy, to laugh at their mistakes, to think what would we have done in their position? Rather, rather, that is something that we should do. We should ponder over what we would have done in their, in their shoes, in their situation. But it's not for enjoyment and it's not for laughter. Rather, the main focus of having these stories, rather the main focus of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending us stories and parables and examples is so that we can relate them to our, to our everyday lives. So that we can extrapolate from them lessons. And so that we can take from them benefit. And the key, and it's something that I mentioned yesterday in the khutbah, that the key to us seeking knowledge, yes, it's okay that we have knowledge. Yes, it's okay, it's good, it's preferred that we have knowledge. Specifically knowledge of the deen. But knowledge without action, without implementation into our own lives is weak and it's dead. There is no use of knowledge that you have stored in your brain. You have knowledge within you, but you don't make any use of it. You don't teach it. You don't practice it. So first and foremost, the lessons that we want to pull from this story should be things that we try to do in our everyday lives. First and foremost, what we want to point out is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always takes care of the believers. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always takes care of those who are obedient to He subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have the case of the boy. His parents were righteous individuals. They had this source of income, which was the cow, their source of wealth. They were poor individuals, they were righteous individuals. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a payout for their righteousness, for their humbleness, and for their worship to He subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they were paid a substantial amount for this cow. In the case of the man who died, justice was served. At the end of the day, we were able to differentiate who was the killer and who were those who were innocent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us that justice does come. Justice does come to pass. The second lesson that we want to highlight and probably the most important lesson is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a command, it is to be followed. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a command, when there is a ruling that is sent down, it is to be followed. An example of this can be found in the lives of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. When the ruling of alcohol being prohibited came down, Many of the Sahaba used to indulge in drinking. Many of the Sahaba used to indulge in this. And when the ruling came down prohibiting alcohol, there are some narrations that say that the alcohol was flowing in the streets, meaning that they had thrown it away. So much so that in our times, the gutters were filled with alcohol flowing. They had gotten rid of it. So quick, as soon as they heard a ruling, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they were ready and willing to follow that. Can we say the same thing about ourselves? When we hear of a command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has for us, when we hear of something new that is in the Qur'anul Kareem, that we did not know about before, are we that quick? to jump on it and say that I'm going to start practicing this. When we, do we make an effort to learn things that we don't know? Because I've come across many individuals, many individuals, my age older than me, adults, older individuals as well, whom they say that we don't want to learn anything new. We'll stick with the little bit of knowledge that we have and that will suffice for us. What is the reason for this? The reason that they give, they say that if we know more, then we have to do more. SubhanAllah. If we know more, we have to do more. So they don't want to follow, rather collectively sometimes, we don't want to follow the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated for us. We rather stay ignorant, we rather stay limited in our knowledge and not follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So first and foremost, we should follow each and every command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated for us and also we should make an effort to learn that which we do not know of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the intention of following it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in the Quran in Surah An-Nisa, that the believers are people when they hear a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they say Sami'na wa ata'na that they have heard this command they have heard this command and they obey this command meaning that they're ready to follow up with this command to do what was commanded these are the believers Rather, the believers should not be some people who Allah also mentions in the Quran. They say in a mocking way, Allah gives us the example, Sami'na wa alsayna. Similar in pronunciation and in wording to Sami'na wa alta'na. But in this case, they're saying that we hear and we disobey. 
We hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent for us. We know the legislations, but we're not going to follow it. In the case of Bani Israel, they were given clear understanding of what to do, and they still questioned. They still didn't want to do it. Even up to the point where they had the cow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they were still near to not sacrificing it. Because their entire goal, their entire objective was to create barriers, was to create hurdles that the Prophet Musa alayhi salam and in their eyes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have to hurl over in order to give them something. So they kept asking questions in hopes that maybe you know, it's going to just get cancelled out. We're not going to have time for this. Musa is not going to have time for this. Allah is not going to send anything for us. Not on, not, they didn't know that what they were doing was not only making their space in the hellfire more hot, but they were digging a deeper hole for themselves. Because at the end of it all, they had to go and find something that was almost impossible to do. Another lesson that we can extrapolate from this story of the Qur'an is to not joke about the commands of Allah and we've explained this just now they created hurdles they created barriers they kept asking questions they even told Musa alayhi salam when Allah commanded them to sacrifice this cow they said are you are you making fun of us are you joking because they didn't understand the connection of a cow to this dead man they didn't understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them with sacrificing a cow and how this would help them with the dead person that they had. And this is something that we need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. We are creations. Sometimes human beings, we like to think of ourselves as creators, but we are actually creation. And our ability only attests to the supreme ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we have the ability, the intellect, to think ourselves better than all other creation. We have the ability to think that we are in control of that which is around us. We have the ability to think and we have created almost a fantasy reality that we are in control and that we are the supreme. Rather, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is supreme. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is in control. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with this ability. Another example that we want to pull and another lesson is when it comes to dealing with the prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has told us in the Quran, أَطِيعُ اللَّهُ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولُ وَأُولُوا الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Allah mentions that we are to follow, we are to obey Allah, we are to obey His Messenger, and we are to obey those who are in authority over them. Allah and His Messenger have commanded with something in this story. And yet they try to disobey, yet they try to evade. So this is something that we need to incorporate into our lives. Now we don't have in our midst a prophet or a messenger like the people before us had. But we have their teachings. We have the kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have scholars who have studied. We have ulama who are versed and educated in the, in the nuances of the religion. It is, from, it is for us to take from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to follow, from, follow it and to take from that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has sent and to follow it. And it is for us if we don't know and if we need explanation to go to the scholars, to go to the ulama and to take from them and to, understand, and to gain understanding from them. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make us from amongst those people who go out in, in the pursuit of knowledge so that we can become better people. Ameen Ya Rabbul Alameen. Finally, we like to mention a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wherein it speaks to the flaw, the main flaw of Bani Israel in this situation. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says <clears throat> that he has forbidden 
for us a few things. So stay away from those things that has been forbidden for you. And do that which you were ordered to do. And, be, and the people before you know that they were destroyed only because of their excessive questioning. Subhanallah, this fits directly into these ayat. The, these people, they excessively question the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They excessively questioned the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even after they were relieved from the tyranny of Fir'aun, even after they were saved through crossing the Red Sea, even though they were preferred in so many aspects, they still excessively questioned the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll end with this bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. If we were from, peop from a group of people who we had, you know, a hard time, we had difficulties. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has directly informed us how to get away from these difficulties. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has averted these difficulties from us time and time again. We have asked and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. Would we not be from amongst people who the next time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to do something, we do it right away? Because we know in the past that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with worked. It helped us. It played to our benefit. But these people, knowing all of this, having experienced all of this, they still disobeyed. They still excessively questioned and they still were on the brink of not doing what they were commanded to do. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst the people who are obedient to Him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a greater understanding of the religion. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'ilin muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر